Hello, everybody. We're Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, and this is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Father, we thank, thank you, you today for your word. We thank you for sending Jesus to be our Savior and our healer, our baptizer with the Holy Spirit and our right. soon coming King. Glory to God. And we thank you and praise you with all of our hearts today. In praise Jesus' God. name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now then, we are here, as we said earlier, in Southwest Arkansas. Um, Gloria was born just two miles up the road here. And uh, not long after we were married, her, her granddad and grandmama gave us four acres right around the here. And, uh, and then we, the kids were just, just little guys. And uh, I, I was telling some of the guys yesterday, we were, we were, my mom and dad came up and we were just, oh, we were so thrilled and and um, I was just standing back over there. Of course, the house wasn't here. Standing over back over there where the, the big sweet gum tree is. And I was just standing there praising the Lord. Little old dry creek bed coming down through here. And I was just praising the Lord and just worshiping him. And, and, and I, I heard the Lord say, that's a pond. Well, it didn't look like any pond to me. <laughs> I said, sir, he said, that's a pond. He said, you see that tree over there? It's still over there in the corner. And I said, yes, sir. And he described it and pointed it out to him. There's two trees standing over there again. And he said, if, if you will build a levee from there over to here, and he pointed out another spot there, that's a pond. Well, then I could see it. Of course, that little creek coming down through there. I said, yeah, that's a pond. <laughs> so um, I asked Gloria's granddad, I said, Pop, uh, what do you, would you have to do to, and I mentioned to him, if you build a, a dam across there and, and so forth. Yeah, he said, that'll work. And uh, I said, well, who do you get to do something like that? He said, well, I'll, I'll call the county and check it out. They had a water conservation plan going on. As the Lord would have it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and they said, um, we'll, we'll dig the whole thing and build the dam and everything for $600. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay. Where could you get a swimming pool for $600? <laughs> no, you can't. Hallelujah. You got that beautiful pond. It's just the Lord. And he's just done wonderful things like this. And of course, they've, they've, I'm sure they've already shown you the shape this house was in. Uh, when we, uh, it was across the road over here and down, uh, and down a ways. And uh, it was on her granddad's land over there. And it's just been said the thing is, uh, uh, I think they said it was a, a hundred and five years old, something like that, when we got it. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, you know, just move it over across the road. So the first guy came out and looked at it, and he said, uh, Copeland, you know what I'd do? I said, what's that? He said, let her sit. <laughs> so we checked around, and I called Mr. Wooten. I'll never forget it. He came out there and looked at it, and I said, Mr. Wooten, what do you think? I said, do you uh, think we can move that? He said, Kenneth, I can move anything. And he laughed and he said, it, it'll work. And he said, I'll move it right over there and set her down for you right where it belongs. And it was Mr. Wooten that moved that log house when it was a piece of junk in here. Praise the Lord. Now the other, the other log house was, it was in good shape when it moved and then it didn't have to do much to it. But they were both antique logs. I mean, old logs. Oh yeah, they old, both old. Antique houses. There ain't nothing modern about either no. one of them. And, and, this, and Faith Girl over here, believe in God for a log cabin. I want a log cabin. Good, we need a log cabin. That, 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 it'll look nice out here. <laughs> so we're in a log cabin. Yeah, okay, log cabin this and log cabin that. Yeah, okay, okay. So <laughs> we're driving toward town one day. She said, stop. <laughs> okay, then I pulled, I said, what is it? She said, I wanna go look, I wanna go look at that 
that old house. Oh. <laughs> oh. She said, I think that's a log cabin. I said, Glory, that ain't no log cabin. You can get it there in a log there. You can see it from here. The thing laid down over on its side, and there'd been a kitchen built on the back of it. It fell off. And it's just laying out there. Oh, it is awful looking. Uh, she said, I'm going out there and look at it. I said, okay. And so we crawled through the fence and walked out there. <laughs> and it had, somebody had, had covered it with shiplap. It just looked like an old broken down old old house. Wonder why. <laughs> and she pulled up the edge of that shiplap. She said, see here? <laughs> it was logs, man. And that was way over. That's, I Big think, logs. Felt like well, that. way over a, a hundred years. And um, I said, glory to God. All right. And we went and talked to the people that owned it. And, and uh, well, it had been in their family for years and years. But she said, yeah, I will. She said, I'll sell it to you kids for $500. And called Mr. Wooten. <laughs> he hauled it out there and set it up. And, and now you see the pictures of it. And it's a great blessing. The Lord has a blessing for you like that. But see, Gloria, Gloria believed God, exercised her faith. So she's seeing that thing on the inside. There's no telling how many, how many, how many times we drove by that thing, never looked at it. But the Spirit of God knew that as logs. Yeah, he did. Huh? Amen. Amen. Now then, let's go back. Proverbs 4. My son, verse 20, this is God's prescription for healing. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they, my words, are life. Cross-reference says medicine unto those that find them. And health, health yep. to all their flesh, their life, their medicine, their health to your scripture. flesh. They'll oh. heal your flesh. You can, you, can, you can get on that, those few right. verses of scripture right there and do what verse 23 says, keep your heart, protect your heart. Don't let a bunch of junk get in there and just, just lock in on the word. What a scripture. Healing words. We've already talked about Luke chapter five. They went to hear and to be healed. Yeah. The hearing came first because Jesus preaching brought faith. Now look at verse 24 is the key to success though. That's the key to success. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Put away from you a forward or a disobedient or a disobedient mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Don't let your mouth be disobedient. Put the words of your mouth should be the word of God about every situation and, and everything. Amen. That's right. Possession of the word Confession of the word brings possession of what yeah. you're saying. And the New Testament makes it so plain. You you put it in your put it in your eyes, put it in your ears, put it in your heart, and say it out your mouth. You got to say it out your mouth. Yeah. And that's the way it uh, all some works. Some very close uh, friends of ours. But they they were not a, a part part of the uh, word of faith. And uh, and they had invited me. Well, it's John and Carol Arnott mm -hmm. in Toronto, the, the church where the, the, the great blessing. outpouring of the Toronto blessing. Whoa. I'm telling you, here's people that knew, knew a whole lot more about praising the glory down than we did. Well, we majored on faith. They majored in the glory. See, God has, God has yeah. specialists. You, you don't want a general practitioner doing a lung transplant on you. 
That's right. And, I mean, you have specialists. This is it. faith is what we were called to specialize in. And back there years ago, people jump on me and say, you don't preach the whole counsel of God. Well, the first thing, I don't know the whole counsel of God. <laughs> I, 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 I know what he's called me to, to do, and I'm not gonna jump the traces and get off out here trying to get over into somebody else's calling. Yeah. But, oh, and I want a man, I was so eager. <laughs> I met John and, and Carol Arnott in, uh, in Rome when we went to see uh, the Pope, uh, Pope Francis, that time, and uh, oh, fell in love with them, and and so they said, "You got to come preach faith to us." So I, I did, and Carol said, "You know, I see it." She was telling, I believe it was Kelly. She was telling uh, either Kelly or, or Terry. She said, "I see it." She said, "We had the believing part, we didn't have the saying part." And I, I see where we, well. We had the believing and saying part, but we didn't have the praise and worship part. We was praising and worshiping, but not on a level that these people were and are. Oh, you know what, Gloria? The streams yeah. are coming together, turning into Making a river. Making a river, yeah, that's right. <laughs> praise God. Glory to God, hallelujah. And a now river, then. now a stream, will just, we got streams around here. They just kind of rock along, going down through the rocks. But a river, oh, it'll take it's it'll got force. take your house down if it gets out of yeah, out of its, it's boundaries. Praise God. Praise God. Now then, believe the word. How do you do that? I remember then that, and back there then I I didn't know this. But the Lord led me in this direction and it, it became a, it just marked my, my memory. We, uh, this is before we went to Tulsa. Now we were born again and baptized in the Holy Ghost and, and um, but we didn't know how to use faith on purpose. I didn't know you could. And I had driven Gloria to the cleaners <laughs> and she's been gone and I had the all ever flu symptom. My, the, my eyes were aching and I'm sitting out there in the car waiting for her and I'm thinking, you know, I believe she's gonna have to drive home. I, I, I just, I'm so sick. And I had my Bible laying open here to 1 Peter 2, 24. And uh, himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin live under righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Yeah. And I, I had read that and I was, oh, oh Lord, thank you. Oh, oh, you know, I, I didn't know. Now look how the Lord led me. I picked up my Bible and I read, by his stripes ye were healed. I said, I held my Bible up like this and put my finger on it. I said, Lord, I choose to believe this. I choose. I choose to believe. See, your, your born again spirit yeah. knows how to believe. But you're going to have to put it in motion. Amen? Yeah. So I choose to believe. The moment you choose to believe and you say that with your mouth, you have released faith where that verse is concerned. Let that word work by putting it in your mouth. Amen. So I noticed by the time she got back out the car, I, I was feeling a little better. I thought, well, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I believe I'm gonna go ahead and drive home. And so I drove home and by the time we got home, I, I, I felt like eating a little something and so, I sat down at the table, and by the time we got to got the supper, I was feeling pretty good, and and went on to bed and slept good. Got up the next morning, never symptom. Praise no. God. And I I I really didn't know much. I just made a choice. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go over to Mark eleven twenty two. Did you make a choice and say it? Yeah, I did. Okay. Now, like I said, the Spirit of God was just leading me in that direction. I really didn't understand what was happening, but I've looked at that and all these years later, 
And I was thinking, glory to God, that's exactly what he was leading me to do. Now, Jesus said in Mark 11, 22, Jesus answering, Seth, and now they came by there and saw that fig tree dried up. You remember the situation? Well, let's read verse 20. In the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Now, Jesus said, no man eat fruit of you again forever. And Peter calling remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. The cross reference says, or have the faith of God or have the God kind of faith. Now what he's doing here, he is revealing to you and to me and for all who care to know how faith works. It's the faith of God. Yeah, yeah but Brother Copeland, that's the faith of God. I know it. And he said, have it. Now, when you got born again, the faith of God was put in you. That's the way you got born again. You were saved by grace through faith. And for verily I say unto you, whosoever, so whosoever can use the faith of God. Whosoever meaneth me. Yeah, it meaneth me too. <laughs> Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. Now listen, here's what you're supposed to believe. But believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. That's what you believe. You believe that those things which you say, those words which you say will come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith or whatsoever he says. Now, remember, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Here's the, here's the key to it. Well, Brother Copeland, you know, God always answers. Sometimes he says yes, sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says, wait a while. Really? Where'd you get that? Uh, get a chapter and verse, if you please. Uh, well, I know that's kind of what happened to me. Well, see, that's not good enough. No. The promises of God in him, in Christ, are yes and amen. Nowhere, not in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or anywhere in the book of Acts did any of the apostles or anybody else that's in the book of Acts ever tell anybody, you'll have to wait. It isn't in there. It isn't in there. The key to it, get the promise. That's the reason that promise book is so important, all those scriptures in four different translations, healing scriptures. Go to that, go to that book, it'll send you to the Bible. Go, get your Bible and mark all of those healing scriptures. Glory to God, mark them, look at them, read them, sit down and write them out longhand, that whole, that whole verse. Write that whole, you ought to mark, write Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, and 25. You ought to write them out in long hand. Get your notebook and write them out in long. Well, you see, I'd rather, no, don't type it. Write it in long hand. Look at it as you write it. You remember it more strongly when you write it and look at it and write it and look at it. Amen. Then it gets in your spirit and it'll get in your mouth. But that's the guarantee. This, this, let the word fight its own fight. Let, let, the word is the answer to your prayer. Can you see that? Either a promise or a Bible fact. 
Oh, glory. I, I, I just... Praise God. I, I, it just looks so clear and so plain. It's not something he's going to do. It's already done. Th this, is where, this, is, this is where the twist comes in and people have a hard time with it. It's, it's not a hard thing. It's right there in Mark 11, 23 and 24. Therefore, I say unto you, Jesus said, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any that your father in also in, which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. That's critical. Yeah. Check it out. Check Mark, uh, check Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's the only thing Jesus specifically called out as a hindrance to faith is unforgiveness. Praise God. That's the way you believe the Word. Amen. Glory, Praise and I'll God. be back in just a moment. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.